Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. This is Reed Freak 7 and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Zapkus Level Editor. So let's get right into it. So to start off, you're going to want to go to the Level Editor tab in the main menu. Press on that and Level Editor and it will bring you straight in to a new world. So once you're in the new level, you're going to want to place some parts. So to do that, you're going to see this window over to your right, and that has all of the different parts that you can place in there. So if you're not familiar with these tabs, you'll probably just want to click through them and get to know where all the pieces are, maybe place some of them down. All you have to do is click on them and then you can drag them over and just get used to where all these parts are laid out so that you know where to find them in the future. So obviously some important parts for your track are the start, there are a couple different variations of that, and then obviously a finish. And you'll also probably want checkpoints to make sure that people can't cut across your track. Another fairly important part is the podium, which is, I have right here. And at the end of the level, when people have played the level, it will show the characters with, or the players with the best time on the podium and display the track behind it. Once you have your amazing track built, you're going to want to decorate it. So the first part of that is painting. To paint, you're gonna to wanna to go up to the paint tab up here. Parts tab was what we were on by default. You'll want to go to the paint tab and here is where you can choose the colors for your track. So. To find the colors, you'll want to go through the folders. It's the same as the parts menu. You'll probably just want to look through these and get used to where all the different colors are and what they look like. I'm going to go for some horrible netting for this track uh, because everyone loves netting. That's not the case actually, but uh, I'm going to pretend it is. Once you've painted, if you discover that you have something you forgot to paint, you can actually use the paint dropper and pick that color. And now I can use that over here on the podium because I forgot to paint this. In addition to that, you can also set the ground color. Whatever color you have selected, you just press set ground color and it will instantly just set it to that color. Now that I've got my track all painted, I want to add some scenery and that is what the nature gun is for this allows you to add well trees rocks and some other various things like these lights and whatnot and it allows you to do it pretty simply so i can place some trees by default it's this tree i believe once that tree is placed i don't really love how this tree looks so i'm going to use my dropper tool and paint this how I want to. And then once I've done that, I can actually take the dropper in the scenery gun, select that tree, and then I can place that tree wherever I like. There are also two placement modes, so I can switch over to the lightning bolt, and that just places it immediately wherever, whereas this has like a little rock that rolls around for a bit of randomness to where you place it. You can choose what you like. I tend to prefer the lightning bolt. And if I think I've added too many trees or rocks or whatever it may be, I can take the trash select tool and just click on those trees and they will go away. It's worth noting that you can also delete a tree by being in the object placer, selecting a tree and just pressing the delete key. Now we've got a few little miscellaneous things I want to cover before we get on with how to validate and save and load tracks. So Stick with me for a little bit. So something that can be really useful when you're building tracks is the grid size selector. So you can see I'm on 16 right now on the X scale. That means when I move this, it's going to move it 16 units. Whereas I can change this by just clicking on it or shift clicking on it to make it go the opposite direction. If I go to zero, you can see it just moves smoothly. And that is the same for all these axes. Uh, the same for rotating as well. If I go to the rotate tool, you can see I can rotate it like that. So another really useful tool to know how to use is the pivot. The pivot itself isn't really special, but uh, what it is meant for is 
So let's say I want to create a perfect circle of some object. Uh, I'm just gonna use this tree. You first want to select your object and then you want to select your pivot. And you can see that the pivot point is actually right in the middle. So you want to select average pivot and turn that off. And that now puts the pivot directly in the center of the last thing you placed. And that's what the pivot is being used for. So I can use the command control D, which is built into the game and do that. And then I can rotate that however much I want. Let's go 45 degrees. And then I can just do that all the way around. And if I want to, I can highlight multiple at once. And that way, I have to reselect one of these so the pivot's in the right spot. And that way, I can paste more than one at a time. Complete my circle. I can delete one of these. And now I have my perfect circle, and I can get rid of all of the pivots in the center. Then there are a bunch of useful keybinds and commands to know, so I'm going to go through those quickly as well. So the first one that I use a ton is Control D, and that literally just duplicates your object. Another very useful one is G when you are selecting an object or multiple objects by pressing Shift and press G, and that breaks you into the mode where you are when you're placing an object, you can use the scroll wheel to go up and down and move it around as well. You can press O to select all, and you can press I to deselect all. You can reset the rotation of an object that maybe you've rotated out of whack by pressing N. If you've messed up your grid sizes and they're just all over the place, you can press M to reset them back to normal. You can press T to toggle average pivot. You can press R to rotate a selected object by 90 degrees, or 45 in this case. For some objects it's 90, for some it's 45. You can press F while selecting an object to flip its orientation. This is most useful for turns or pieces like this. When you press F it switches sides so you can turn the opposite direction and not just this direction. And last but not least, you can use Control Z and Control Y to undo or redo an action. And once you've got a beautiful level like I have here, you'll probably want to save it. You'll probably want to save it before it's done as well, in case you have to get off or your computer crashes, but uh, to save it, you will go up to the button in the top right corner. That is your save button. and you will see on the right all of your levels and over here you have a few options for what you can do with them. But first, to save your level, you're gonna wanna click on whatever folder you wanna put it in or if you don't want a fit folder, you don't have to put it in one. You will click on the file name and title it what you want and once you've done that, you just click the save button in the lower right. Now whenever you save the level, it will have the name already there provided you haven't uh, changed it or loaded a new level or whatever. When you're in the save menu, there are a few useful buttons. If you're in a few folders and you want to get back to the screen, you can press the home button. That will take you to the main screen. You can press the folder up button to go up one folder, or you can press the add folder button and you just name it what you want and press that button to add it. If you want to load a new level, you can press the load button up next to the save button and these buttons do the same stuff as in the save menu. You'll just click on whatever level you want to load and press the load button. Now before you go and validate your level, you're gonna want to probably look through the settings tab and in here you can change the time of day to whatever you like. We'll just go with that. You can also press P and that will change the time of day as well. Then also in the settings tab, you can turn on and off the base plate. We're going to leave it on, but also in here, you can set the times after you have validated. You can set the other metal times. No one really messes with that, so I, I wouldn't worry about it. Once your track's exactly how you're going to want it, you can press the validate button. And all you're gonna have to do is play through your level, show that it's completable, hit all the checkpoints, and hit the finish and get a time.
when you get back to the level, do not touch anything. Don't click anything. You want to save it immediately. Something to note here is that whatever angle you are at when you save the level, that is the level that the level screenshot will be taken from. So you probably want to choose a good angle to get it from. Make sure you don't click anything and save the map. Once you've done that, you're ready to upload. So once you're ready to upload, make sure you have your map saved. Put to the main menu, go to the level editor, upload levels, new workshop item, and you can call it what you want. I'm gonna call it the same as the map and add level so i want to find my level somewhere in here i'll get there eventually test map add this level and then once i have done that i can just hit the upload button and it will upload it to steam automatically so those are all the tools you have at your disposal in the base game at least to my knowledge but if you're willing to go and use mods then you will have a lot more options in the level editor. So mods in the level editor can be very, very useful. They allow you to do all sorts of stuff. I'll show you a list on screen of all the different mods that I like to use. So if you want to use mods in the level editor, you'll need to install Modkist, which is a mod manager for Zapekist. I'll leave a link to the website that tells you how to install it and everything in the description of the video. So the first mod that is extremely useful is Blueprints Plus. It adds a ton of useful features such as what I just did, that is the Alt Select. You can hold Alt and drag to select objects, which is super useful, and then you can do what you like with them. It also adds the ability to use the scroll wheel on an object while selecting it, or multiple objects, to scale it. You'll also see three blue buttons that have appeared. Now that I have this mod installed, the S button is the scale parameter, so it changes how much it will scale by when I scroll. And then up here, you have a new load and save button. So the new load and save button are for the main part of this mod, which is blueprints. So I can, let's say I really like this tree and I don't want to take two seconds to paint it again. So I can select that tree, press the save button. I can call it tree. And then I can just save this. And that is now saved as a blueprint folder. And if I want to spawn this in any level, I press this blue load button, click on tree press the load button, and then I can place it where I would like to. Another really useful mod in the level editor is level editor object properties, which adds this box over here. Whenever you select a part, it'll show this box. So you can adjust the scale on each axis, which is extremely useful. You can see I just made it taller. I can adjust the force and speed of the booster past the normal limits, so I could go like a hundred force if I wanted, which is a terrible idea. Don't actually do that. And I can also adjust the rotation on each, each axis and the position on each axis. The next mod is level editor save state. So when you are validating a level, you can press X mid run to save your position. You can see it said save oh. state. Now, if I go to validate that level again, I will start from that position. So this can be really valuable for testing levels. And if you want to clear that save state, you just press Z and that removes the save state. You may have noticed these lines on the track after I validated. Those are from the mod level editor trails. Basically, it just traces the path of your car and you can hide those by pressing F7 to toggle that or you can press f8 to clear all of your lines you can only have i think up to four and it's a little bit buggy it doesn't always save after each run so just be aware of that it's not perfectly consistent but it is a very useful mod the next mod is called level editor vertex snapping this is an extremely useful mod especially if you are building off grid if you're building off grid and you've got something that's just nowhere close to the grid it's going to take a lot to try and line it up and you'll never get it quite perfect 
that's where this mod comes in handy. You can press whatever key you have saved. I have it set to Z. I think by default it's control. And you can press on one of these vertices. You see that white dot appears at the vertice. I can click and drag that over to the same vertice on the other track piece. And they are perfectly lined up. Now this can get a bit buggy if you have other parts in the background. So if you're using this mod to build a track, I would recommend building the track first and then decorating it so that you don't have to worry about it trying to snap to everything. The next mod is a very simple one, and you won't see any change here in the level editor, uh, but it's called Zeep Settings. You can go to Settings, and it adds this Mods tab at the bottom, where you can adjust settings for each mod you have installed, and you can adjust uh, keybinds for the mods, and just all sorts of useful stuff. So I really recommend this mod as well. And this last mod is called Zeep SDK, and it's just a dependency for other mods. So I believe at least level editor object properties requires this dependency, but some of the others may require it as well. I'm not sure which ones exactly require it, but it's just a useful thing to have installed. If your mods aren't working properly, Make sure you have that installed and uh, see if that fixes it. Well, thank you all for watching this video. I hope that you found it useful and probably not entertaining. It was a bit dry, but I hope you've at least found it useful, found some stuff you didn't know, and will be able to use it in the future to make some sick levels. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.